Let's look at another exciting event in the past which actually involved a massive warming. The question then is whether this warming happened as rapidly as uh, th it is happening now and whether it was also associated with uh, CO2 release and what the uh, carbon cycle response was. So that is the Paleocene Eocene thermal maximum. So you can see that in this 65 million year uh, record that spike is uh, pretty massive. So this is looking at degree centigrade uh, ice free uh, temperature change. So this happened over, uh, so you look at the numbers here, 5 to 10,000 gigatons of CO2 were released into the ocean and atmosphere in less than 10,000 years. So obviously the uh, carbon release was much much slower. The source of that is still not very clear. It's generally argued that there are frozen methane hydrates which are in especially coastal regions so when photosynthesis happens and organic matter falls down and gets uh, doesn't get completely uh, aerobically respired uh, converts to methane like the digesters we looked at uh, and then under pressure can get hydrate and, uh, hydrated and remain there and some perturbation would release large amounts of CO2. Not completely agreed uh, yet but there it is but there are uh, several evidences to confirm the uh, amplitude and the time scale of this change. So the re warming was 5 to 9 degrees centigrade globally. That's massive warming. Anything beyond what we are uh, hoping for anyways under even business as usual scenarios even though 5 degrees is within that range. The big difference of course here the land configuration was also different. Those are the various uh, data sites from where uh, data have been uh, extracted including land and ocean. So India was still a uh, little bit to the south of the Asian subcontinent and you can see the various jumble here and uh, Australia was still way south here, New Guinea. So this whole thing is moving north at about 3 centimeter per uh, year and then all of these are moving north as well. You wouldn't have had Himalayas, you had this uh, place open here. So uh, Isthmus of Panama was uh, open uh, as far as uh, we know. It closed around 7 million years ago. Drake Passage opened about uh, 70 million years ago probably and so on. So entire system was different. So plate tectonic activities could have potentially dis disturbed the methane, clathrates, hydrates and released massive amount of uh, CO2. But the rate of CO2 uh, uh, release and warming rates are what we are concerned about as far as looking for a, a paleo analog to global warming is, is concerned. So what are the kind of carbon isotopic excursions you would get if with these abrupt uh, climate change during uh, warm climate? So this is the carbon cycle perturbation. The mass of uh, carbon released has to be related to the PCO2 increase as well as the carbon isotopic excursions as they are called. Marine range of median carbon isotopic excursions and terrestrial range of median carbon isotopic excursions because those are typically the evidences we would use from these sites to interpret the amount of CO2 release and so on, right? So methane hydrates would give us these numbers. The thermogenic methane permafrost melting would bring us up here and wildfire and epicontinental seas uh, would give us uh, uh, in this range. So essentially you need to try to constrain the numbers that you can interpret and uh, so you will get some uh, evidence of how much CO2 was released based on carbon isotopic excursions. So you can interpret what amount of uh, atmospheric CO2 perturbation would have occurred, which we just mentioned. And then we need to look for their source. So essentially we are trying to estimate the potential of release from these uh, different sources. Um, those sources still remain. So those responses are potentially in the system in terms of clathrates and permafrost. Uh, as we mentioned before, there are uh, there are 
permafrost thawing happening but the responses are not that they are releasing huge amount of CO2 because lakes and ponds are forming which are creating some photosynthesis and perturbing the carbon cycle but not just in a runaway sense that we expect. All this is happening in the context of the projections for uh, the representative concentration pathway of 2.6, which is the best scenario in terms of trying to stay below 2 degrees centigrade. And the business as usual scenario would take us to 8.5 watts per meter squared radiative perturbation, resulting in massive polar amplification and massive warming everywhere. The statistical significance uh, of the models is, or, or the agreement between models is high uh, in these cases because temperatures are well depicted in this, uh, these systems. The scales of temperature are large, but there is still arguments that the regional projections are not, not that um, reliable. But we see our favorite place where the uh, AMOC perturbation is quite clear. This is well observed so far. Uh, that will still remain in this projection, but quite damped, and the warming will be quite large. Warming over Antarctica and Greenland are really concerning in these uh, projections, but there is some polar amplification, but much less warming over here, which continues the... Um, ocean at the hemispheric asymmetry plus also remember that the global south or the tropical latitudes are fairly warm so warming further here can also increase uh, the humidities which actually can create serious problems just in terms of physiological ability of the human bo body to lose heat as sweating if the dew, tempera dew uh, point temperature reaches 35 degrees, then human beings can die because then the uh, human body cannot cool itself by uh, sweating. So those kinds of details are there uh, as well. So looking at the EMEAN then, uh, these were the evidences. This is the model reconstruction. Polar amplification exists and the last interglacial gave us uh, a warming that is kind of in the range that we expect uh, with global warming. So we are still uh, adjusting, so it's a transient response, but we are going to jump up soon uh, uh, like this if we continue uh, the emissions. This would require drawing down carbon seriously using carbon capture and sequestration. So that last uh, interglacial or the EMEAN does provide uh, some good analog for global warming. So the point I, w one should emphasize is that the polar amplification and the thermohaline circulation remain uh, key fee feedbacks in the system. The water vapor feedback, cloud feedback, ice albedo feedback all are critical here and the thermohaline circulation response is uh, also critical as we can see here. And what are they related to? Obviously freshwater fluxes. So models have tried freshwater fluxes but it turns out that many models can produce the pattern of change during the da last deglaciation and the Heinrich events but they require much larger inputs of freshwater uh, than can be estimated from data and they seem a bit unrealistic. So this probably means that the models are a little too stable uh, to changes in ocean circulation, but that could be bad news in terms of uh, tipping points or rapid runoff, melting of Greenland and so on that may be there in the system that the model projections are underestimating, so we have to be careful uh, because none of the models right now are projecting a collapse of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, uh, especially within the 21st century. So recent model estimates constrained by observations suggest that rates of carbon injection during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum was 0.3 to 1.7 peragram carbon per year, uh, which are lower than the fossil fuel emissions uh, we are putting out at uh, present. So just to close out the chapter, we can do a brief comparison uh, of the Emian interglacial to the Holocene interglacial. So that's the timeline there we are talking about. <coughs> 
so we had greater northern hemisphere insulation uh, we don't have that uh, in the current configuration of the uh, orbital parameters but that's not a huge contributor we are currently at uh, more than 400 ppm and Greenland uh, uh, it was less during the EMEAN than it is at present um, Greenland uh, ice uh, uh, sheet contribution to sea level rise, West Antarctic and the mountain glaciers and expansion of the water because of the warming uh, was basically 6.5 to 9 millimeter per year and we are currently at about 2 to 3 millimeter per year but we are projected to rise at 10 to 30 millimeter per uh, year so I'm sure more work will be done to understand the uh, system here but as we said the uh, land ice sheets are now gone so in many ways this is a good analog so this is definitely something to worry about the sea level rise that's projected and the way the Greenland uh, ice sheet is disappearing it could be uh, a real abrupt climate change a driver in the 21st century okay so the chapter basically tried to give you a sense of the past perturbations and past responses to see what are the best lessons for global warming there are many in terms of feedbacks including carbon uh, cycle feedbacks and the last interglacial provides a very good analog for looking carefully at at least the kind of sea level rise uh, we are uh, facing potentially but more has to be understood in terms of carbon cycle feedbacks okay